enlightenment is the ultimate goal of Buddhism. Enlightenment means the realization of the ultimate truth called Nirvana. That truth is not outside us as the goal in other religions where that goal is heaven, paradise, God or Brahma. According to the Buddha in Roy Tatsa Sutta, where he directly says, the Nirvana, the ultimate goal of Buddhism, is within us. He says directly, it is within our own body, which is about six feet. Vya matta kalebere panyapemi loka samudhyancha. Loka, the Buddha used, Vyamatta uh, Kalabri Panyapi Loka Nirojanta. Not only Samudhi with the um, cause, Lokancha, Loka Samudhyancha, Loka Nirodancha, Loka Niroda Gamini Patipatan. That means entire four noble truth is within our physical body, which is about six feet. That means Nirvana is nothing but the ending of suffering in us, Dukkha Nirodha. The suffering is in our mind. Our mind is filled with suffering. According to Buddha, both pains and pleasures are suffering. We can suffer not only by pains, but also by pleasures. For example, we take pleasure in playing, but ultimately we get fed up with it. You may enjoy reading novels, ultimately you become tired and you feel like putting aside the novel when you are tired. You may enjoy doing good or meditating until you get tired. Whatever that we do for our pleasure can make us tired and can make us fed up with what we are after. Therefore, ultimately, there is nothing but suffering in our mind. What we call mind is the content of the mind. Content of the mind means thinking and feeling. Feelings lead to thinking and thinking leads to feeling. There is the procol. And that is the content of our mind. Nirvana is emptying the mind from its content. Then there is the original mind. Original mind according to the Buddha is nothing but Nirvana. It is an eternal state, timeless and boundless state. It is not born, ajata. It is not an event, akata, uh, abhuta, not a happening. It is not done by oneself or anybody, akata. It is not composed of something else, asamkata. These are the words used by the Buddha to express the ultimate nirvana, which is our empty mind. Empty of what? Empty of thinking associated with feeling. That is what the Buddha realized at the enlightenment, according to the first period of joy, where he says, Visankara Gatam Chitta. There is the ending of Sankara. Sankara means the thought process. Cessation of the thought process means cessation of all feelings and all mental images. The mind becomes empty 
and that empty mind is not limited by time and space. Ananta means, as said in the Drona Sutra, Ananta means beyond the space, not bound by space, spaceless. Ananta, infinite, both in space and time. Akaliko means infinite in time. There is no time dimension, there is no space dimension in Nirvara, that emptiness. As I mentioned earlier, in the Tathiri Bhagavan Sutta, Buddha says, Nirvana is not born, not an event. That means it has no beginning. It has no happening. It is an eternal state. But all thoughts and feelings are conditional and ephemeral. Anichavata Sankara Upadavai Dhammino Upajitta Nirudyanti Tesam Upa Samosuko. That is what is reported to have been uttered after the Buddha's Parnibbana in the Maha Parnibbana Sutta. There is a saying, there is a stanza that the Buddha himself has uttered earlier, but it was reported at the final moment of the Buddha, it was repeated by the highest god called Sakra at that time. Anichyavata Sankara means all thought forms are impermanent. Anicca. They are dynamic, they are changing. They are active means they are changing. Anichyavata Sankara Uppada Vaidhammanu. They are born Uppada. Vaidhammanu means decay. With regard to thought formation, there is birth and decay. And ultimately, Uppajitva Nirujjanti, they are born to die. That means our thought forms are born to decay and die because they are conditional. Conditional means Paticca Sampan in Pali, related to some cause. That is the uh, law of relativity in uh, Buddhism. Paticca Sampanata is the law of relativity which the Buddha has taught us by which everything and being and event is conditional. Something happens, something is there under certain conditions. But Nirvana is not conditional. There is no condition for Nirvana because it is not born under certain conditions. It is not happening under certain conditions. And it is not done under certain conditions, and it is not composed under certain conditions. Ajatam, abhutam, akatam, asankatam, as in the words of the Buddha. That reality is not something that we have to believe in. We have to see it and become one with it. Pachattam veditabbo inyuhi. Pachyatta means you have to digest it. Realization of Nirvana is digesting it, becoming one with it. At that moment, there will be no difference between Nirvana and oneself. The self gets dissolved in the Nirvana. It is like a drop of water when dropped into a lake, get dissolved in the water or the lake. Similarly, your individuality gets dissolved in the Nirvana. That is why Rayaran Buddha goes uttered in his Visuddhi Magga, the treaty is called Visuddhi Magga, Ati Nibbuti no Nibbuto. There is Nirvana, but there is nobody who has attained Nirvana. When there is individuality, when there is Atta, then there cannot be nirvana. When there is individual, when there is self, there is attachment and resentment and also ignorance. Freedom from attachment, resentment and ignorance means attaining nirvana. 
attaining nirvana is becoming one with the supreme bliss with, with us it is a bliss because it is free from all suffering that is why it is called dukkha nirodha what is suffering according to buddha panch upadana kanda api dukkha thought formation is the suffering in a nutshell padana kanda they are the five elements or five incidents that go to form a thought formation a thought process thought formation when there is no thought there is no suffering therefore because buddha explained through experience at his first sermon called dhamma chakka patana sutta panche padana kanda api dukkha that is as i mentioned suffering i mean the entire thinking process thought formation thought get formed due to the thirst of the self for delight pleasure and to get into bliss pleasure or suffering all suffering is based according to buddha's first teaching dukkha samudaya due to thirst of the self that i that idea of self the concept of self what you call self self is nothing but your own thought your own mind your own thinking it is a mental image the self is there is no self anywhere in our mind or body except images and all the some total images we have in your mind go to form what you call the self that you identify as yourself when the, when there is self the self as a thirst as a natural instinct to search for pleasure and search for ways and means of getting rid of bliss pleasure or pain self is after pleasure with the idea of removing suffering pain when there is pain you want pleasure it is because of pain that you require pleasure pain is there because your self and your thought formation is there according to buddha's teaching when there is no concept of self it get lost the concept get lost at the first stage of nirvana called sota panna stage but the tendency of the self created up to that moment remains for some time but it can't remain for more than seven births according to buddha and it won't reach the eighth birth chachabi thanani abbo no in the rather sutra nate bhavam attamam adiyanti it can go to a uh, eighth birth but till eighth birth things happen though there is no self to do it tachabi thanani abbo kaadu all the five organs the all the six sense organ including the five external organ i e n o s etc and the internal organ called mind they are doing nothing no reaction but only responses they are doing without a doer and that former tendency of doing with the doer goes on until the final enlightenment where you get formless mindless that it there is why it is it in kevada uh, sutta namanch rupanch ashesham parujyati at the nirvana there is no name there is no mind rupam there is no form there is no body in nirvana without any remaining it is mindless it is formless that is state 
but that state cannot be explained by an example. No example can be given with regard to the state called Nirvana. That is why it is said in the Kevada Sutta, Vijnanam Anidasana. You can sense it. You can be with it. That can be a conscious but without a self. There is a sensation. That is why it is said, Veditabbo uh, Vinyohi. Only a sensitive can be one with the Nirvana. That is the realization. Without a division between the knower and the known. The knower and the known becomes one at Nirvana. And that can be given by any example. Anidarsana means no Nidarsana. Nidarsana means examples. And that state, as I mentioned earlier, is nowhere else. Sometimes you can empty the mind while meditating. You can empty the mind even while doing anything. That means emptying the mind is not thinking. The mind has two capacities. One for sensing things, that is the capacity for consciousness. The mind can be conscious of sensory experiences, being conscious. When, one, when the mind becomes conscious of sensory experiences, it starts think, thinking about those experiences. For example, when an unmarried young boy sees a young girl, beautiful girl, she is not only aware of that girl, she is planning to fall in love with her, to be friendly with her, to get married to her, to make her a girlfriend. Lot of dreams appear. Dreaming means, daydreaming means thinking. Non-thinking is non-daydreaming. That is the state of an enlightened mind as well as the path to enlightened mind. When Reverend the Bahi, an ascetic, called his nickname as Daruchirya, while Buddha was going his arm round, he went after the Buddha and asked whether the Buddha could explain him in short how to get enlightened. Out of compassion, Buddha said, Uh, this is a Pali word by the Buddha. Tasmati bhaye ditte dittamattam bhaye sati sutte sutamattam bhaye sati vinyate vinyate mattam bhaye sati mutte mutte mattam bhaye sati vinyate vinyate mattam bhaye sati That means when you see something don't think of it. Just be conscious of it. Remain your awareness only in consciousness. Sutiyatudamattam Vaisati. When you hear something, be aware of it and remain in your consciousness without proceeding for sankara or thinking. Mutiyamudamattam Vaisati. When other three sense organs, ear, nose, tongue, and skin become conscious of some object of sensation, be aware of it, but don't think of it. Vinyate vinyate matam bhaisati. When some memory gets retuned and mind becomes aware of some past experience, just be aware, aware of it without thinking of it. Non-thinking is the path to enlightenment and the un outcome of enlightenment. As I mentioned in the First period of joy, visankara gatam chittam, the thinking process ceased at enlightenment. We can practice that and realize it by ourselves. As the Buddha advised the ascetic Bahir, who got enlightened after listening to those words, while standing on the road, we got enlightened. He realized the truth. Therefore, enlightenment is the realization of the ultimate truth. 
ultimate truth is called unconditional. It is apatikta sampanna, not patikta sampanna. Not dependent origination. There is no dependent origination. It is an eternal state. We are ephemeral. We are impermanent. We are changing. We are born to decay and die. Everything and every being also in this universe is born to decay and die. But behind that, that background is an unborn, uneventful, undone, uncomposed eternal reality called Nirvana. Realizing it is, as I mentioned earlier, it become part and parcel of you are not nothing but the Nirvana. That is why it is said in Brahmanism, Hinduism, Tattvam Asi, that the word, that means that ultimate truth. You are the ultimate truth. The ultimate truth is in you. And even Jesus Christ said, he was speaking of a kingdom of God. When somebody asked him, can you show where the kingdom of God is? Can you? I can't show that the kingdom of God is here and there. It is within you. It is a self-realization. Understanding yourself is the self consist of something permanent and something impermanent. Thinking and feelings are impermanent. And even the consciousness is impermanent because mind is conscious of what he thinks and what he feels. And thinking and feeling are always changing, therefore consciousness also changes. The ultimate truth called Nirvana is beyond your own consciousness. Beyond sensory experiences. Rupa, rupa means sensory experience, stimulation. Vedana, feeling, sensation. Th those are the aspects of our thought. Stimulation of sense organs called Rupa. Sensation of sense organs or consciousness of sense organs called Vedana. Signals sent by the sense organ to the brain to recognize what the sensation is. That is signal is called sanya, and once the object of the sense organ is recognized by the mind, mind starts thinking that is called sankara, and all thinking creates a karmic force according to Buddha, that is the karma law, law of karma, a capacity to be reborn after birth, from birth to birth, for us to travel in the existence called sansara. When we get attached to something, we want to continue it. And if you can't continue in this life, you want to continue in future life. When you hate something, that hatred also goes from life to life. That is what happened to Reverend Buddha's enemy called Devadatta. Long, long ago, he hated Buddha due to some wrong deal done by the Buddha in a previous life, and that hatred went from life after life to life. There is a temple where the Arang Yasodara. She fell in love with a Buddha in a previous life, and that continued from life to life. There is what, what happened to Kali Akni at the story in the Dampadatta Katha. She hated a concubine of another wife of her husband and that hatred continued from life after life. It is the thinking by which we get attached to things that we retain things. And attachment returns are continuing life after life. When there is no attachment, when there is no resentment, when there is no ignorance of the reality, that is mean when the mind is vita ragi, vita dosi, vita mohi, you get enlightened. And mind becomes free of thinking and feeling. And that is the ultimate bliss 
that one can realize by attaining by enlightenment which is the attaining nirvana the ultimate truth eternal truth boundless truth boundless in time and space we have all the capacity all of us have the capacity for that realization but vijnanam ani dasana can realize it but it can be shown by an example according to what the buddha said in the kevada sutra